Hello everybody, Anthony is here. In this video I will talk about how I created this industrial kind of like oil rig using the blob tool. If you want to see how to use the blob tool itself, I recommend you to check out the previous video and it was more about the basics of the tool. And as usual there is a um, promo code for 3D code purchase if you want any in the description for the video. So let's go jump into the time-lapse. Okay, so here start with just the plane. Let's set on de density, so you can see density at the bottom, like uh, 80,000 triangles. And I'm using the uh, three-sided radial symmetry since I think it's kind of interesting and, and I'm bored of doing like two-sided or four-sided symmetry and 3D code has fairly unique feature of the symmetry. It's really flexible and allows you a lot. So created that shape and duplicating it, scaling it down, putting it inside. Pose and stuff around. So essentially, I wanted to close off the holes which I had. So the blob tool is always a little bit unpredictable. So even though I'm trying to angle it, I just change my camera angle and try it again and again and see what it does. So here I kind of found this uh, structure. So uh, again, one would say it's a drawback that you have a bit of an unpredictable tool, but for looking for new shapes and uh, new designs, it's pretty good. It, uh, it always gives me new ideas on how to approach the subject. If I were to, if I had some kind of clear image or picture of something in my head, I would probably rather do it in some other software. I'm like right now I'm studying Blender and Blender plugins. Uh, but when you are kind of in a free form mode and want to do something quick, I think 3D code still beats any other software by the ability to do stuff that quick and that easy. And if, for example, you just feel like uh, you need more uh, practice to become a better designer, it's definitely, it's really cool, definitely the choice. So I created the structures then, you know, flip them over, or scale them up, uh, stretch them out, and got uh, this look. Which I really enjoyed. I think my symmetry got off from the, the bit I flipped and scaled. I was trying to fix it for a few moments. Yeah, you can see it's off, but it kind of failed to fix it. And I ended up using other objects um, with uh, better symmetry. Like I just used the previous object, the previous layer I had. It all, already had a proper symmetry, so I didn't need to fix fix it at all. And here I'm like thinking, oh, maybe I've offset it from the bold and I need to put it in the center of all locations. So if I reset the symmetry, it resets to the bold center. But it didn't work out. Uh, also, I have a lot, a lot of reference here for all rigs uh, from all over the world. I was just like Google, like oil rig Alberta, well, oil rig Norway. And you get a lot of reference that you can then use. I, I wanted to do like industrial look. I kind of wanted to use it for setting like uh, uh, exploration. I was doing, I have this mud vault setting. Uh, I'll have, have more videos coming more, uh, about it. 
but I ended up doing a design that was really kind of at this model level of technology, so it didn't look like something sci-fi. It looked really, really realistic in some certain way, uh, like something. I guess I was relying on my reference way too much, but also I was like, kind of looking for this brutal industrial style. But I did rely on the reference so much that I ended up kind of making a very modern, I guess, um, looking structure, which you know, wasn't um, really far in the future at all. So you can see here, I have these planes, and I'm just using a box high tool here, and uh, I've hidden the whole part of the plate. And then I'm just unhiding and unhiding. Then it's like the resolution of this mesh is fairly low, so I'm trying to unhide stuff, but it's all like uh, pixelated and um, jagged. So I had trouble getting a good line, like getting a good a clean structure. But it's also I always enjoy this. I always spend a lot of time just trying different shapes all the time. I don't have, you don't usually have a clear picture of what I'm going to do. Also, I want to try ten different shapes, and really often, some shape turns out to be really nice, and it was kind of created at random. So I have these three plates in uh, the, like a support columns and. I wanted to make more of a depth to the structure, so I wanted to make some holes. And I experimented with the shapes of the holes. And ended up with just rectangulars, which uh, to know to look the best on this particular design. So you can see it's already like a 2 million marker, 2 million triangles, 2.5. And, a half. Uh, and uh, right now it's running really well, but man, like once I go deeper, like to 10 million. 15 million, I have to start isolating objects all over the place and it becomes kind of slow. But here I was thinking that there will be a pipe that will um, kind of burn some gas uh, and it will have some smoke at the top. Uh, here I was doing the pipes, so essentially I increased my brush radius of the blob tool and I did it from the top, I did a bunch of pipes. That would have been used for a you know, refining process or there would have been a backup pipes that you reuse to drill down, which they do in oil rigs. They have a whole um, piles of the pipes that they reuse, well, they used to drill. So they feed the pipes to the drill and you know, go like a kilometer deep if they need to seek out and suck out some oil. So I'm re reusing the elements as much as I can. So this one was just like a uh, so I've created a structure and just flipped it over and decided to carry on with the tower and trying to scale it in different ways to see if, how to make it better. So I decided that that top tower is just the start of the whole drill. I can make it much bigger. And I was, I carried on building and building the stuff up, stuff down actually, from top down until the end. And actually, I stopped doing it until it became too slow to work on because it hit like 20 million mark, 20 million triangle mark and became kind of slow. So I'll always run a random just to see where I stand at.
also the material I'm using here, you can see this orange. I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, 3D, uh, 3D Code viewport because it's it's nice. It's not like Maya, which is pretty awful. Uh, uh, but it's nice, it's fairly realistic. And when I assign material here, like uh, this orange, uh, it makes me f feel like it is an industrial structure and, and puts me in the mindset of thinking about it as a factory type setting. And yeah, and becomes a little bit more enjoyable. I don't know how to explain. Just puts you in the right mindset. And I've tried doing it with all kind of different um, other colors. I tried just plain white. White just kind of looks boring. Uh, blue, just um, not really the right color. Again, doesn't feel like it. Gray, again, makes it look a bit boring. Yellow is kind of the right type of color. So, you know, yellow, orange. But yellow is a bit too bright. In, and kind of hard to see uh, what's going on. So I'll pick the orange as really kind of the best color I could go with. It's like a polymer orange, I think a custom made color. So I'm starting to add the structures to the the big, big uh, plates, uh, adding that to the drill. And I think uh, this guy essentially, um, you know, you, you make it, uh, and then you need to you know, modify the scale of it because right now I thought it was looking good, but then if you zoom out and look at it, it looks that like the base structure is way too tiny. So in the end, you'll see I made it way bigger, like three times bigger than it is now. Because otherwise, proportion-wise, it looks a little bit funny. I think if I just flip the structure right now in this oil hole thing, it would have looked a little bit sci-fi-ish because it would be it would have been like top heavy, uh, which is unusual for um, uh, a structure. It's actually a good idea. I've never thought about it. Yeah, if I just flip the structure right now, it would be top heavy, and it will look unusual, and therefore it will look a little bit sci-fi-ish. So, and again, I created this plane and made it look, made it blue. So now it looks like water. Puts you in, in the right mindset. It's also like hides everything that goes through it. So it cuts out everything that goes down. In my reference folder, I had probably like a hundred photos of different oil rigs and uh, just uh, I looked at, watched some videos as well. I'm usually uh, quite interested in how stuff is built and how stuff operates. I never watched documentaries on that and everything I could get my hands on. So you can see here, I did the render and I realized that the base is way too tiny for the tower and I made it bigger and then much bigger. And now I'm like, all right, that's maybe about the right size. And I just free form scale that stuff. Oh, here I'm actually drawing the smoke. The smoke uh, is a lot of fun to do 
So I'm using the carl brush, um, making it a bit thicker, increasing the density, and it really, it's just so easy. You can see I've done it in a few minutes. I got something all that was looking all right. I wouldn't say it's looking super realistic. I made some mistake of the where the smoke starts, but you know, it's good for placeholder. Good again to get the feel of it, and he started to look you know quite nice when i rendered it look uh, gave a lot of believability to the whole thing i'll use this noise modifier to uh, add more irregularity to the whole smoke And then just assign some white material. Oh, actually, not white, like this volumetric material. It uh, gives uh, some shading to it. And there you go. A nice looking smoke. And even get a shadow of it, I know, at the bottom on the water, like you would do from a real smoke. I was thinking about uh, adding some bits to the pipe to change the design of it, make it less thin. Working on some details. And cut in here and there, trying to make these um, cables, cable type structures thinner. So you can see I started to group stuff because it will allow me to hide it. And if I hide it, then I, it's less slow and I can focus on just certain bits of the oil rig. Just some detailing at the top of the bit of the rig. Trying to use a block tool to draw some shapes. And I thought I could find a better design here and decided to unhide certain bits. Oh yeah, I'm just trying to find the uh, kind of nice angles and then, the, and then do like a camera animation fly through. Uh, again, now I kind of know how I would recreate it in Blender. So, for example, I can do the sketch. And I'll probably, I'll, I'll definitely will talk about it in the future. Like I'm uh, making some sketch here, and then uh, using or plugging like a box cutter and do a nice uh, Blender uh, sharp lines. Because if the traditional problem is the voxels here is that uh, they are not as 
sharp as the surface and not only that but also they're really dense and you know when you get uh, 20 million triangles for a fairly simple object which in other normal conditions won't really exceed like uh, 50,000 triangles you start to think about it you know, like how, how can I optimize my uh, workflow But every time I think, okay, I'll want to use Blender and only use Blender, I just uh, feel like it's still not, doesn't give me so much freedom as 3D codes. And I kind of have to press way more buttons in Blender and orient, orient myself harder. And I go back to 3D code. So I really think that in the end, after multiple trial and errors, it will be more like a 3D code Blender pipeline for me. Let's see how it works out in the future. I've also seen some voxel uh, early stuff in Blender. It looks promising, so let's see how that unfolds in the future. Again, it's probably not going to be as easy and hard, uh, easy to manage as 3D code, but you know, I'll be following that up. So here you can see I've been adding different kind of equipment on the top of the uh, Ulrich Tower, so they could be, you know, all uh, well, icon uh, equipment, uh, comms, any kind of communication antennas. Uh, what have you and then you have redundancy equipment if something goes bad you want to duplicate that line a couple more times so if one tower gets knocked out one antenna is no longer working you want to have a backup uh, at least like one or maybe it's two uh, depending how important that part of the equipment is And they have some kind of cooling equipment out here. I put some, it was kind of a little fun bit. I was putting the dishes on the railing. Like, uh, and it's all again done in uh, the triple symmetry. So I'll get it across the whole railing in places. Again, it's quite a cool. I can see on my right, I have, I made this little kit bash of really simple shapes and I just reuse it uh, there Here I was drawing blob shapes on top of the existing part, or is it walk side? I don't know, I'm using walk side, but yeah, I was drawing some blob shapes on top of the panels to get kind of simple, sci-fi look.
And dealing with circles on triple symmetry is a bit tough because you don't have a symmetry on the circle, so you have to kind of eyeball your placement. Uh, that's what kind of I did. So I'm doing this extra railing on the sides. And again, I kind of spent all my polygon budget on top of the a tower and then it became kind of too slow to work at the, at the bottom. I thought I had uh, the top two symmetrical, so I wanted to add individual blocks. Like that could be some lifting mechanism uh, for lift, for example, to get somebody up. And yeah, I do try to think about the um, the purpose of the stuff I add, because if you just do a gribble, it will look like gribble and not really realistic. And the more sense you put in the, into the stuff you create, the more realistic it will look. And that's why I have to watch all the documentaries on how, how stuff works. I watched maybe like uh, 10 to 15 documentaries on factories, like how the factories work in different productions. Here I've added these bits at the bottom, it will be like a floating support of the columns. So extending the drilling Uh, the thing I had here is I kind of had a really little space in the midsection if you wanted to store anything uh, like there are no living quarters, no nothing, no like no repair shops. So uh, I, I don't spend a fair amount of time thinking about it. So this is just like extra maybe a maintenance place to go down and check the cables the top and I did a little bit of railing uh, here for those cables
So here again, I made a, a really big radius for the brush and I decided to add this uh, cylinders using the blow brush. So the bigger radius makes it obviously like thicker. I might have used you no know, primitives or other like a million wave ways to uh, the cylinders, but I was kind of constrained on a blob tool anyway, so I was trying to do as much as I could using the blob tool, and that's why I used it uh, to create the cylinders. And again, it could like store the essentially the oil that been refined and put in there. Or anything else, will you? So here we're thinking that it would be great if I could have some kind of landing pad there or something that would pass the fuel um, to fill up the sh uh, like ships. I was just thinking about flying ships. Oh, here I have this, like, and this was an idea, uh, a discharging pipe. So if you have any wastewater, you drop it over there. Like you have on a ship or well, essentially on an oil rig, so we have some kind of waste use for the clean water waste or well, dirty water waste. So the idea is that there's you know, really big plates, some metallic plates um, stand there and you can attach stuff to them. Like these pipes, though the attachment on the pipes uh, kind of not looking that great. I think I remove it later. And again, it's fairly simplified, really more of a concept sketch than anything else. And here I draw the, the kind of water discharge. So again, just using the cow brush, I think. I mean, some just fun drawing it flowing down. And I was rendering the, the stuff inside Keyshot, so I did the uh, essentially the um, I assigned model magic materials to both the water discharge and to the smoke and it all looked like just, you know, the water became like foamy liquid coming down and uh, smoke, well, looked like smoke. And now I have the discharge. Again, it's pretty amazing how it's really cool. You can jump from doing this like industrial shapes and then really quickly draw something like a smoke or water effect uh, to support your design. Here I was drawing, uh, I started to draw some kind of maybe living quarters or workshops or repairing shops or whatever they could have been. Uh, uh, support buildings and all that uh, along the main middle frame.
Also, for example, if you're doing one bit, you can use a symmetry copy that would be uh, using your triple, like, well, quadruple symmetry settings, and it will carry across all your stuff that's been done on the left or right side, and it's pretty amazing. So I'm just working on that cylinder stuff around and uh, hold instructions in, to have in place. I was thinking if I could place some kind of again living quarters there or some structures in the middle and did few of those blockouts but kind of didn't like any of them. So here I'm drawing these kind of landing pads. I think them here I made them too big. I ended up having oh, removing them mostly. So I wanted to add some horizontally protruding antennas, uh, that was fairly interesting. Uh, but again, I kind of left the top over detailed compared to the mid and bottom. Uh, I guess I got just a little bit tired uh, dealing with the slowness of, the, of it all. And I've created this little drone shape. You can see uh, it's kind of like seven, uh, four propellers. Uh, again, simple blob tool, nothing special. And I thought it would be like uh, f it'll f it'll be filling up at that filling station and then be flying away to the 
port of destination. And here I'm using the sideway to create that, how to say, a fuel in terminal. Oh, dock in terminal. All right, so I build that fill in bit. little cable support Another railing on the sides. So creating a bit more space in the middle. Another plate. I got that black uh, display artifact. Not sure how to remove it. I think it was like even it's, no, it's probably not not in uniform mesh. You should get it from, but I'm not sure. Then like support structures on the end because I had to increase the polycon on that or resample it because we're pretty jagged 
I think I did some tests. I would drop into a key shot every now and then and I'll look at it and it was looking not that great. So I had to improve on it. Though I don't think I improved on that that much. Adding some detailing on these big surface areas, so we kind of really liked something like I'll measure some sensor equipment. And doing some test runners inside free code. Doing some finishing touches here, kind of getting, I guess, tired of the whole project. And you'll see me uh, trying to add a feature and then it won't add properly and I'll like change the viewpoint from up to from side to top. I was doing the supports and I started to kind of bug out, I think. When I was trying to flip them and add to the other side, uh, it wouldn't really match well. I can also see I no longer have the cast shadows option on because at 20 million uh, triangles so my system gets, starts to slow down. So I have to turn it off. And my cast shadows is my kind of... I really enjoy using it. It really puts everything in kind of perspective and easier to understand what's going on. And for those who like skipped the, most of the video, I 
talked about uh, the blob tool essentials in my previous video, so we can check it out. This one is more just like a commentary over time lapse of this guy, how it was made. Yeah, so putting the supports in place. And this is kind of mostly done. Uh, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next video, really.